When thinking about where the safest place on Earth is, many people first look to violent crime and war as indicators of risk and danger. So-called dangerous cities and countries are easy to brainstorm. Whether cities like St. Louis, Missouri, which has one of the highest rates of violent crime in the United States, Gary, Indiana, where the likelihood of being a victim of a property or violent crime is 1 in 29, and San Pedro Sula in Honduras, which is ranked the most violent city in the world. Countries in conflict like Syria, Yemen, and Afghanistan are also viewed as dangerous. But when considering what makes a place safe, rates of crime and proximity to military conflict are not the only factors to consider. For instance, Japan has long been one of the safest countries in the world, with low rates of violence and petty crime. However, you might be surprised to learn that as recently as 2011, Japan posed the highest risk of death by fire in any developed country, followed closely by the United States. Japan also reported the fourth highest rate of earthquake fatalities between 1900 and 2016. Though Japan can be considered fairly safe in terms of crime, its reputation as safe does not consider vulnerability to natural disasters. As you can see, environmental safety and risk of violent crime are just a few factors of many that weigh into whether a place is the safest place on Earth or not so safe after all. In addition to factors like violence and natural disasters, many safety ratings consider health outcomes, such as life expectancy or rates of certain diseases within a population as well as environmental factors such as access to clean air and water. So what makes a place safe? And where are the safest places on the planet? Let's find out! Before we dig into the hard data surrounding things like crime rates and health risks, we have to address something that is not so black and white, yet still very important. We're talking, of course, about people's perception of where they feel is safest. Many people tend to perceive certain places to be safer than others, and that feeling of safety is important, whether or not these feelings are backed by the data. Feeling safe will encourage people to live in certain places over others, and perceptions of safety can become widespread, influencing where we choose to live. According to one global study, the safest place in the world, according to perception, include many European countries like the Netherlands, Sweden, Austria, Finland, and Norway, as well as Canada and Australia. New Zealand was seen as the third safest country according to the study, with Denmark taking the number two spot. The safest country in the world, based on purely perception, is Switzerland, which also holds the number one spot for best country overall in another US news ranking. Though Switzerland may be seen as the safest, there are many competing factors that would put the validity of this view in jeopardy. Views on safety are largely impacted by one's identity and background, including race, gender, class, ethnicity, and a number of other factors. For example, in general, women tend to be more concerned about their personal safety and take more safety precautions than men. This is especially related to fears of sexual violence, and their concerns are valid. While women consistently have lower rates of experiencing violent crime in general, women are twice as likely to experience sexual violence. So a woman might perceive places with poorly lit streets and isolated alleyways as more dangerous than a man, with the contrast in perception being closely tied to gender identity. Not only that, some conditions like policing are perceived as a sign of safety by some parts of the population and are seen as dangerous by others, based on their backgrounds and related experiences. For instance, while some may view a strong presence of law enforcement as a sign of enhanced safety, Research shows that many members of racial and ethnic minorities view law enforcement with more suspicion and distrust than white people generally do. Experiences with police can greatly vary based on a person's ethnic and racial background, which in the case of negative interactions can lead to distrust and a feeling of unsafety. Unsurprisingly, people who identify as non-white tend to disproportionately report unfair treatment by law enforcement officers, which is correlated with lower trust in police. These widespread sentiments of distrust reached a national scale during the Black Lives Matter movement in the United States, especially in 2020, challenging the widespread narrative that police presence increases safety. Here, it's clear that perceptions of safety versus danger can be closely impacted by identity and personal experiences. As a result of these different perceptions, safety can be hard to quantify and to generalize. Not all experiences are the same, and a place that is safest for some people may not be safest for all. 
So we need to keep this in mind as we take a look at some of the current safety and health factors in different areas. But first, let's take a look at how these factors have changed and evolved over time. Timing matters a lot when it comes to safety. Historically, the safest countries to live were likely the ones with access to the best medicine and newest technologies. Access to quality medicine would ensure a longer and healthier life, while technologies related to shelter, food, and other basic needs could provide for the essentials. Other advanced technologies like access to gunpowder or metals to forge weapons could protect communities from invasion and military conflict. However, peace and safety have been suddenly disrupted without warning many times throughout history. For instance, many indigenous tribes in the Americas lived off the land for centuries before colonizers arrived in the late 1400s, bringing disease, forced labor, and migration, and heavily armed military conflict. Though there were in fact conflicts between tribes at times, life in the Americas prior to the presence of the Spanish is largely regarded as a safer period of time for indigenous peoples than after European colonization began. Many determinants of health and safety have fluctuated over time, as global living conditions have changed. For instance, the average lifespan has generally grown with access to medicine and healthcare, and rates of child mortality have declined over time. In pre-modern times, nearly half of all children died before their fifth birthday, while in 2017, child mortality declined to 3.9%. Access to vaccines, antibiotics, and other critical healthcare have significantly improved health outcomes worldwide, which has increased overall safety. Risk and danger have also escalated in recent years, especially with the development of dangerous technologies. The creation of nuclear weapons and other nuclear technologies within the past century presents a catastrophic risk across the globe. Already, some places have and continue to experience the catastrophic impacts of nuclear fallout, such as in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, when the United States bombed Japan in 1945, and in Chernobyl and Fukushima, where nuclear power plant reactor meltdowns took place in 1986 and 2011, respectively. Aside from the initial devastation of these nuclear attacks and accidents, ongoing radiation in these places leads to ongoing risk for the health and safety of those living there. The ongoing threat of nuclear war, as well as the ever-present risk of nuclear disaster, is a relatively new and evolving safety concern that first emerged nearly a century ago. At the same time, growing concerns around climate change have escalated risk in many places around the world since industrial revolutions began. By the end of the 21st century, many places around the world will be uninhabitable, especially the world's hottest places that will get increasingly hotter, coastal regions and islands facing sea level rise, and places that are the most vulnerable to hurricanes and tropical storms. As temperatures become more extreme, droughts and flooding become more common, and extreme weather events become more frequent, the world will undeniably become a less safe place to live. This will especially be seen in places that are the most vulnerable to climate change. Similarly, many outlooks on health and safety have largely shifted since the height of the COVID-19 pandemic and other widespread diseases like HIV, AIDS, and Ebola. The coronavirus pandemic, like other major epidemics, heightened both structural and political successes and failures of healthcare systems and disease management around the world, particularly in cities. COVID-19 was the first pandemic of its size to occur in our world as it's urbanized today. You see, in the 1900s, when the Spanish flu hit, only 14% of people lived in cities worldwide, while today, 57% of people live in cities around the world. Because of this migration to cities, cities have become densely crowded. Without adequate health protections and policies in place, disease can spread quickly and hospitals can be overrun, facing capacity concerns. Many cities were not equipped to properly manage the coronavirus pandemic, as we saw in 2020 and the following years. Others like Copenhagen, Denmark, Toronto, Canada, Sydney, Australia, and Tokyo, Japan fared particularly well. So when thinking about the safest place on earth, the safety and resilience of major cities has begun to play an increasingly more important role in overall safety of a country, especially as the world has urbanized over the past century. With all these examples, you can see that time largely determines what makes a place safe or not. As our planet contends with major contemporary issues like climate change, the spread of pandemics, and nuclear fallout, the state of safety is always changing in our world. 
New advancements in healthcare and technology have improved the safety of our world in many ways, while new risks present themselves often. So where is the safest place on Earth now, in 2023, and beyond? Let's break down the current state of the factors we've discussed, starting with health. As we discussed earlier, health plays a major role in how we can think about safety around the world. Factors like accessibility of healthcare and quality of healthcare infrastructure, rates of disease, and life expectancy can tell us about the quality of healthcare systems in different places. Birth rates and child mortality rates can play a role in determining what living conditions are like for pregnant women and newborns. Clearly, health can take many shapes and forms, which all can inform us on where the safest place on Earth really is. At the same time, suicide rates, prevalence of mental illness and care, and happiness ratings can tell us about the emotional health of a given place. All of these ratings and factors play a role in the health and safety of a place. Beyond that, however, let's also consider how different people from different backgrounds experience these conditions for health and safety. Arguably, one of the most important determinants of health and safety of a region is access to quality health care. Access to a well-developed public health system is a predictor of longer life expectancy and better health outcomes. Healthcare quality and capacity is crucial, especially in times of widespread health crises, like during the COVID-19 pandemic. In 2021, the Commonwealth Institute examined the healthcare systems in 11 high-income countries, rating efficiency, care process, and the quality of healthcare outcomes. Norway, the Netherlands, and Australia were rated as having the best healthcare by this review. Of the 11 countries, the United States has been ranked as the worst six times in the past 20 years. Another study, based on the public perceptions of healthcare system quality, found that Denmark, Germany, and Sweden were viewed as countries with the best developed public health systems in the world. Clearly, many European countries, as well as Australia, rank highly in healthcare access. But how do they hold up in other areas of health and safety? Though healthcare access can show us a lot about how healthy a country may be, healthcare ratings alone cannot show a full picture of health and accessibility in a given place. Access to healthcare is not equal for all people, so even if there are ample hospitals and quality healthcare available, cost and other barriers of healthcare systems can make quality healthcare inaccessible for low-income people especially. At the time, disabled people, older people, pregnant people, and neurodiverse people all have diverse experiences within the workplace, schools, healthcare systems, and in society can impact health and wellness in a given country. The experiences of marginalized peoples, especially those dealing with health conditions, disability, pregnancy, and aging, can greatly vary between countries, regardless of the status of the healthcare infrastructure. However, diverse personal experiences cannot be easily captured by these statistics alone. So, how else can we begin to paint a more complex picture of what health and safety looks like in a given place? Rate of disease is another metric by which countries are often measured in terms of health, though types of diseases and ways of measuring them vary greatly regionally. There are many ways to examine risk of disease in a given country. One World Health Organization study, which looked at the risk of premature death by non-communicable diseases like cancer, diabetes, and heart disease, found that South Korea, Switzerland, Japan, and Australia were all countries with the lowest risk of death from non-communicable diseases. Similarly, Japan, the Koreas, and France were among the countries with the lowest rates of heart disease, which is tied to diet, exercise, and rates of obesity. Of course, as we saw during the recent coronavirus pandemic, risks associated with communicable diseases like the flu, COVID-19, HIV, and AIDS, among others, also play a big role in the safety of a place. During the COVID-19 pandemic, countries like China and New Zealand, as well as smaller countries like Burundi, Vanuatu, and Bhutan, managed the coronavirus with strict policies and had some of the lowest death rates per million people during the pandemic. Death rates specifically around disease can tell us about disease control and healthcare quality, but death rates in general can also give a general sense of health and safety in a given country. Some of the countries with the lowest overall death rates between 2015 and 2020 include Qatar, the United Arab Emirates, and Bahrain. These particularly low death rates are thought to be related to well-run healthcare systems, impressive and improving technologies, and top-level patient care. Infant mortality can also provide a useful measure of health and well-being, 
When it comes to infant mortality rates, Slovenia, Singapore, Iceland, and Monaco emerge among countries with the lowest rates of infant death. So these countries may be safest for infants given their postnatal health care, relatively low levels of potential risk for infants, and other factors. But thinking beyond death rates about measures of health and safety, one might wonder where do people live the longest? Life expectancy is a widely used metric when gauging the overall health and safety of a place. Longevity can be a signal of genetics, culture, diet, healthcare, environmental conditions, lifestyle, crime, and more, all of which contribute to making a place safe to live. Among the countries with the longest life expectancies include Monaco, with an average life expectancy of 87.01 years, Japan, with 84.95 years, Switzerland, with 84.38 years, and Singapore, with an average life expectancy of 84.27 years. In Japan, the high life expectancy is largely attributed to diet, since vegetables and fruits, fresh meat and fish, and grains make up most meals, exercise, and the country's investment in public health, with robust vaccination programs and universal health insurance. Switzerland's life expectancy is thought to stem from an active lifestyle, overall satisfaction, and a diet with lots of dairy like cheese and chocolate as well as the fact that Switzerland spends a higher percentage of its GDP, or gross domestic product, on healthcare than any European Union country. As we can see, lifespan is closely tied to many living conditions that play an instrumental role in health and safety. Both physical health and lifespan, another important factor in health and safety, is mental and emotional wellness. One way to examine mental well-being is to take a look at happiness ratings by country. So what countries are happiest? According to one 2021 ranking, Finland is the world's happiest country, Denmark is the second happiest country in the world, and Switzerland is third happiest in the world, with Iceland and the Netherlands following close behind. Iceland is also ranked as the country with the highest feeling of social support of the happiest countries, with Finland, Norway, and Denmark tied for second place. On the other hand, Taking a look at rates of suicide can also provide a glimpse into emotional wellness and safety of people in a given place, whether tied to living conditions, politics, culture, or other factors. The countries with the lowest reported suicide rates include Antigua and Barbuda, Barbados, and Grenada, as well as countries like Jordan, Syria, Venezuela, Honduras, and the Philippines. Many Scandinavian countries like Norway, Sweden, Denmark, and Finland have high happiness rates and relatively low rates of suicide. But the long winters with days lasting up to 20 hours or more is associated with seasonal affective disorder and higher rates of suicide. However, considering specific statistics like suicide rates may not be the best way to identify health of a country. These rates don't account for circumstances around suicide. For instance, in some countries with liberal laws around physician-assisted suicide, such as Belgium, there might be higher rates of suicide with many of the deaths related to terminal illness rather than mental health. In other countries, like South Korea, suicides among elders are fairly common as a result of family structures that leave older adults financially dependent on their younger relatives, and suicide is often turned to as an alternative to being a burden on the family. These different conditions surrounding suicide in different places shows us that the circumstances around mental well-being and health cannot totally be captured by statistics alone whether suicide rates, rates of disease, or funding for healthcare. The factor we need to explore is the effect of environment and climate. But let's first take all of the health factors we've discussed so far and determine which countries are the healthiest. One ranking that incorporates life expectancy, infant mortality rate, health expenditure per capita, and GDP per capita rates Iceland as the healthiest country, given its high levels of health spending, low incidence of preventable diseases, long life expectancy, and state-funded universal healthcare system. Not only that, but Iceland requires residents by law to register with a physician, encouraging preventative care for its people. Other top healthiest countries include Japan, with its particularly long average life expectancy, robust universal health insurance, and high availability of hospital beds, as well as Italy, Singapore, Sweden, and Finland. As you can tell, all those ranked as healthiest in the world are also known for their aptitude in various areas related to health and well-being, including the spread of disease, lifespan, healthcare infrastructure, and happiness ratings, among others that we explored earlier. 
But as we mentioned, healthcare isn't the total picture. What about environment and climate? A major determinant of health and safety is related to the environment and climate of a given place. The quality of a place's environment and its vulnerability to climate change and other environmental hazards will increasingly determine the health and safety of the people living there as our world experiences more severe impacts of climate change over time. Some of the factors that determine which countries have the best outlooks for environmental safety include resilience and ability to adapt to climate change, risk of natural disasters, food security, accessibility of clean air and water, and exposure to radiation, lead, and other harmful contaminants and chemicals. All of these factors can give us a better picture of which countries are the most environmentally safe places to live, both now and as climate change escalates in the future. As climate change escalates, the hottest places on Earth will grow hotter, the cold places will grow colder, the wettest places will become wetter, and the driest places will become drier. Hurricanes, forest fires, drought, and flooding will all become more frequent. Sea level rise will make many islands and coastal regions uninhabitable, and other extreme weather events will become both more severe and more common. No place on Earth is totally safe from climate change, but some places on Earth will be safer than others. First, places that are cooler are expected to fare better, as by the middle of the 21st century, summer temperatures are expected to be between 5 and 6 degrees hotter than they are now, all across North America. With similar trends worldwide, the safest places will also be away from the ocean, as many coastlines will shrink and become eroded. Islands may find themselves underwater, and tropical storms, flooding, and hurricanes will become more frequent more intense, and deadlier than they are today. However, access to fresh water is also imperative, as the demand for clean drinking water grows. At the same time, desert terrain and dry places have used up much of the groundwater reserve, and the dry land has become unable to absorb the rain that does fall. Not only that, but elevation will come to play a significant role in safety from flooding and extreme temperatures. All of these factors can keep people safe from climate change, but where on earth fits the bill? Some top-rated places in terms of geographical safety from climate change include the northern United States, especially around the Great Lakes and Northeast, as well as Greenland, Ireland, and central Canada. Scandinavian countries like Norway, Finland, Sweden, Iceland, and north-central European countries like Estonia and Latvia are also considered to be relatively safe from climate change, barring a collapse of the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, or AMOC. We won't go into detail on this system, but a collapse of this water circulation could cause temperatures in the region to change significantly and relatively quickly, which would have significant impact on the affected country's food output. The timing and likelihood of this is still debated by scientists, so we've included these countries for now. When considering more factors that relate to climate resilience, such as carbon dioxide emissions targets, efforts at shifting to clean energy and adaptability, as well as geography, Norway is rated as the country least vulnerable to climate change. Norway is also followed by New Zealand, then Finland, and other top countries in terms of climate resilience include Denmark, Sweden, Switzerland, Singapore, Austria, Iceland, and Germany. Social systems and governmental policies play a major role in these rankings, as all of these countries are committed to mitigating climate change and transitioning away from harmful fossil fuels. Similarly, one Global Sustainability Institute ranking estimates that in the face of climate catastrophe and global collapse, New Zealand is best poised to persist as well as Tasmania, Ireland, Iceland, the United Kingdom, and the United States and Canada. These rankings were determined based on metrics of self-sufficiency, the resilience of food systems, finance systems, energy systems, and isolation from other countries that may turn to them in times of catastrophe. You may notice, however, that many of the top-rated countries are wealthy European countries that have the financial capacity to adapt to climate change. While some of these countries have demonstrated a commitment to acting to mitigate climate change, stopping climate change from becoming catastrophic depends on global action. So despite commitments by some of these countries to go carbon neutral or to shift to clean energy, these places may still be at high risk of climate effects if countries worldwide do not shift away from fossil fuels. As a result, commitment to mitigating climate change may not be the best indication of safety in the face of climate change. Regardless, low-income countries are disproportionately at risk from climate impacts. 
since they often don't have the means to fund adaption-related measures in the face of climate catastrophe. Another major environmental safety concern is the threat of natural disaster. The vulnerability of a given place is tied to the socioeconomic state of a country, the infrastructure in place to prevent disaster, and the environmental factors that predispose or protect the place in times of disaster. A place's ability to adapt to reoccurring natural disasters as well as to cope and rebuild after times of disaster is also highly important. According to one 2020 review, Qatar was ranked as the country with the lowest disaster risk, with countries like Malta, Saudi Arabia, Iceland, Egypt, and Finland all ranking in the top 10 safest countries from natural disasters as well. Adaptability and vulnerability in the face of natural disasters is increasingly important for safety, as climate change continues to escalate. Food scarcity is another major factor in terms of resilience to climate change and disaster, as well as overall environmental health and safety of a place. Food security and the ability to produce food locally can make a country safer in times of disaster, such as during the coronavirus pandemic, when soaring demand caused shortages of essential foods, affordability, the availability of food, and natural resources, and the safety and quality of food are all considered in one ranking of food security, which found that Finland was the most food secure country as of 2020. Other highly rated countries include Ireland, the Netherlands, Austria, the United Kingdom, Sweden, Japan, Switzerland, the United States, and Canada. These countries are therefore safer in instances when food supply is short, and can be safer places for those at risk of food insecurity. Beyond times of disaster and famine, slower, less sudden, and intense forms of environmental harm can also pose serious risk to health and safety, such as access to clean air and clean water. Pollution and climate change go hand in hand, impacting the health and safety of billions of people worldwide. For instance, in early June of 2023, over 120 million people across the United States were warned to stay inside due to unhealthy air quality. The skies around New York City turned a grim orange as Canadian wildfires covered the northeastern United States in smoke and ash. Wildfire smoke, as well as fossil fuel emissions, trash incineration, and other forms of air pollution can all greatly impact air quality posing serious health risks for those with respiratory diseases like asthma, as well as for pregnant people, aging adults, children, and at times, everyone. Countries and territories with the cleanest air include Guam, French Polynesia, and other islands in the tropics, as well as Iceland, Australia, New Zealand, Finland, Sweden, and Norway. Meanwhile, access to clean drinking water is another necessity, as contaminated waterways can contribute to spread of disease, birth defects, and reproductive concerns, or other long-term health problems. Countries with the cleanest water include Austria, Finland, Greece, Iceland, and Ireland, as well as the Netherlands, Norway, and Switzerland. Another major consideration for environmental safety is the rate of exposure to deadly chemicals and contaminants, such as lead, forever chemicals, radiation, and more. These contaminants can greatly impact people's health, especially immunocompromised, pregnant, older, young, and disabled people. In one rating of the least toxic countries in the world, Kenya was rated at the top, followed by Tanzania, Ethiopia, Mozambique, and Cameroon. Many developed wealthier countries have higher levels of toxicity as a result of pollution and chemicals resulting from rapid development. Eight of the most toxic countries, on the other hand, are located in the Middle East, where oil extraction is prominent and development is accelerating. Through all of this, we can see that the environment around us plays a major role in terms of our safety. As climate change and environmental degradation persist and accelerate, environmental safety will grow increasingly crucial and will impact many lives worldwide. However, it's important to note that many of these environmental rankings are based on projections, outlooks, and notions of what environmental health looks like, while the future of climate change may in some ways be unpredictable. For instance, though, the northern U.S. is labeled as relatively safe from climate change. The impacts of the Canadian wildfires were surprising and unexpected in a place that was thought to be less impacted by climate change. Nevertheless, the environment and our climate plays a significant role in determining the health and safety of a given place. Next, we'll examine the safest countries when it comes to violence and harm. But who are the top contenders for high environmental safety? Some of the safest countries in terms of environmental conditions include Finland, 
which was rated highly in terms of resilience to climate change and natural disasters, clean air and water, and food security. Iceland, which received similarly high ratings on climate resilience, adaptability to climate catastrophe and breakdown, resilience in face of natural disasters and clean water and air, as well as Canada, Norway, Sweden, and Switzerland. But how do these countries and others shape up when evaluated for safety from violence and harm? Determining safety also requires a look into rates of violence and harm in a given place. Though violence is often thought about as one of the most obvious forms of safety or unsafety in a place, there are a number of factors that determine whether violence is a serious risk in a given place. First, the Global Peace Index provides useful insights into how safe a place is, as do rates of military conflict, rates of violent crime, and levels of policing presence and violence. However, some risks to safety are less obvious, such as strength of gun laws, risk of nuclear war, rates of political oppression, and traffic and pedestrian fatalities. So which countries have the least violence, whether in terms of war, crime, or political oppression? The Global Peace Index ratings are focused on three domains of peacefulness, which include levels of societal safety and security, the extent of ongoing domestic and international conflict in a given country, and the degree of militarization in that country. The societal safety and security category is measured through rates of violent crime, terrorist activity, and violent demonstrations, as well as relationships with neighboring countries, stability of the political scene, and the number of displaced people and refugees from within that country. Ongoing domestic and international conflict is measured through indicators of involvement in external and internal conflicts, as well as their role and the duration of involvement in said conflicts. Finally, the indicators of degree of militarization include levels of military buildup, access to weapons, level of peacefulness, military expenditures as a percentage of GDP, number of armed service officers, and financial contributions to the United Nations peacekeeping mission. So which countries are the most peaceful according to this rating system? Let's look and see. Coming in the top spot as the most peaceful country in the world is Iceland, which is followed by Denmark, Ireland, New Zealand, Austria, and Singapore. Other largely peaceful countries include Portugal, Slovenia, Japan, Switzerland, and Canada. Clearly, the Global Peace Index can show us a lot about peace and violence in a given country. But military conflict and violent crime are not the only forms of violence that we should consider. Even with the value that is provided by the Global Peace Index, however, there may be some shortcomings in this evaluation of peace. Considering militarization, for instance, and access to weapons and quantity of armed service officers can cause many large, wealthy developed countries to appear unsafe because of military presence. However, militarization may also be seen as a form of safety and security, as an established and strong military presence could deter conflicts from other countries. As a result, the index may not entirely represent how peaceful or violent a country is. And it's important to understand safety in the broader context of a country's political and social situation. Beyond militarization and participation in military conflict, nuclear warfare has emerged and escalated as a major threat to safety in the past century. Many major cities worldwide, especially in the United States and other wealthy developed countries with access to nuclear weapons, like Russia, France, China, the United Kingdom, Pakistan, India, Israel, and North Korea are at risk of large-scale nuclear attacks. Countries involved in military conflicts globally are also at heightened risk of attack. With the scale of nuclear impacts both immediate and long after, as seen in the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki by the United States government, the prevalence of nuclear weaponry, which is estimated to be 13,000 weapons, suggests that the entire planet is at risk. So where is the safest place to be in case of nuclear attacks? Switzerland, for one, has space for 100% of their population to be protected inside blast shelters. Australia and New Zealand, according to scientists, are geographically best suited to survive a nuclear apocalypse, as well as Iceland, the Solomon Islands, and Vanuatu. However, military alliances and involvement are always changing, so predicting safety in the event of nuclear fallout is difficult to do. So we've seen how militarization and external threats of war can play a major role in safety. But what about the domestic side of violence in a country? How does policing protect or harm people in countries around the world? Police are often thought to keep us safe. However, the presence of police may not be the best indicator of safety in a given country. 
As the use of deadly force poses a serious risk to many people worldwide, especially when paired with relaxed gun laws, Iceland, Denmark, and Switzerland are ranked as having the fewest police killings worldwide, reporting no police killings annually. Iceland has had only one police killing in its history, and police in Iceland do not carry firearms. Other countries that are the safest from police violence include Portugal, Sweden, Norway, Finland, and New Zealand, among others. At the time, many of the countries with the least police killings are rated as among the overall top safest countries in the world. While the police and military can pose a serious risk for the safety of a country, death and injury related to violence often stems from political circumstances of a given country. For instance, countries with limited freedom of the press or with known persecution and criminalization of certain people, whether based on race, religion, sexuality, gender, ethnicity, or some other aspect of identity, can pose a serious risk to citizens and visitors. So which countries are safest for self-expression and for women, LGBTQ plus people, and others from marginalized backgrounds? When it comes to self-expression, safety can be largely supported or inhibited by cultural and political circumstances. And so, places with the greatest protections and cultural support for self-expression tend to be safer from diverse backgrounds. To this point, Norway is ranked as having the greatest freedom of press, followed by Denmark, Sweden, Estonia, and Finland. Further, the Netherlands, Canada, the United Kingdom, Australia, Norway and Sweden are all rated as having strong laws around religious freedom, which protects another form of self-expression. At the same time, Norway is regarded as one of the world's most gender-equal countries, with considerable efforts to expand women's rights and to support self-determination and the expansion of opportunities for women and girls. Finland also has a long history of gender equality, granting women full political rights in 1906, the first country to do so. Men and women are equally represented in the workforce in Finland as well. Iceland also is among the top countries for gender equality, and in Iceland, there is a law that no public corporation board, government council, or committee may have less than 40% gender equality. Denmark, Luxembourg, Switzerland, and Sweden also have reputations for gender equity. At the same time, Canada is ranked as the most LGBTQ-friendly country in the world followed by Sweden and the Netherlands. On account of their legislative track records for LGBTQ rights and same-sex marriage, the Netherlands is known for being the best country in terms of racial equity, followed by Sweden, Norway, Canada, and Finland, according to public perception. All of these factors contribute greatly to the safety of a place and the people from all walks of life that are living there. Another important factor for safety is tied to rates of traffic and pedestrian fatalities, which can demonstrate a form of harm that is not always intentional but holds severe implications for safety. The safest places to drive worldwide include San Marino, with no reported deaths per 100,000 inhabitants, Micronesia, the Maldives, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, and Switzerland, among others. Road safety is essential in determining the safest places on Earth, since drivers, bikers, and pedestrians alike all are at risk from dangerous road and driving conditions. So what countries are the safest from violence? Norway, Finland, Switzerland, Sweden, and Denmark all emerge as relatively safe from violence, especially in their ratings for freedom of expression, suggesting they may be particularly safe for people from marginalized backgrounds. So considering everything we've discussed, where is the safest place on Earth? It can be hard to definitely say that any country is the safest, given how subjective perception-based rankings can be, and how limited some statistical-based analyses can be. It's important to remember that not every place will be equally safe for all people, and that people come from different backgrounds and experiences. However, by using many lines of reasoning and evaluating safety from a number of different perspectives, we have narrowed it down to one country that's safer than the rest. When all is said and done, Iceland is the safest country in the world, especially given its ratings as the healthiest and most peaceful country in the world. Not only that, but Iceland does not have any kind of harmful or dangerous animals, including mosquitoes, ticks, bears, snakes, or poisonous spiders. It highly supports the equity of all people, has a very low crime rate, has very clean air and water, has no army, and its police do not carry guns, 
It also has high resilience to climate change, natural disasters, and nuclear war. Other top contenders include Switzerland, Denmark, New Zealand, Norway, Sweden, and Finland. But in the end, Iceland takes the top spot. How does your country stack up in the rankings of safety? Where do you feel safest? Let us know in the comments. Now watch why hot countries are poorer than cold countries, or what's the most difficult place to get to in the world.